So that old black magic arrangement by the famous music corporation. Not sure who the actual arranger is, they don't say. Uh, just in case I did provide the link to where you can get the score online for this score, in case you don't have it. All right, so into, or it could be even faster. I'm thinking of those as quote unquote 16th notes. But the thing is, one, two, one, two. After the initial introduction, we have a couple of chords there, you know, just setting up the E flat major with some added notes. So instead of the pure E flat major, we add the C, so so-called added sixth chord. And it sounds a little cooler. So what right away, uh, let's let's put this in. Do not hold, do not hold, you jump right away. Yeah? So the idea is you need to be right here by pretty much where I put the cyan highlight. And here we are. You practice backwards of course. As soon as I hit that first note, I don't go on. I actually make sure that jump has happened. It's, it's kind of kind of hard a little bit. Uh, okay. After a few tries, make sure you're not actively looking at the hand. You can You really want to feel that space without looking. Then you can look to just make sure you landed right. But you want to feel these black keys and how these long fingers fit in between them. Okay, there we go. So. Same thing, of course, right away here. Uh, we don't hold that half note, we instantly jump. So something like that. Yeah, that's, those diagonal arrows mean move. Vertical arrows or up or down mean go in and out of the keyboard. missed here. So that's that's the challenge of this intro. Set this up. And then of course back down. Uh, I keep labeling those as cyan. I should probably use different colors, but you get the point. Jump right away. Uh, uh, two, two here, yeah. Let's actually add fingers. So, and when I land on that two, I'm actually landing on all four notes. So this is where I like to use my rectangle just to really show that hey all of these notes are important to land also because the the right hand has to play so far be below the middle of the keyboard i find it kind of important to scoot over so look at my nose right it's right here not the usual middle point right here if you don't do it you're kind of reaching over with your upper right fo uh, uh, right upper arm and you don't want to feel that so just roll over like that and I would do it, you know, at the beginning before you start playing. So maybe torso equals whatever, B4 or so. And um, stay there, stay there until your, your left, your right hand is not having to play so far down anymore. When it moves out over here later in the arrangement, yeah, you can definitely get your nose back in the center. But for the time being, just sort of do that. Uh, the, it does get a little annoying, so you could literally just slide your entire body over while you're practicing, but you can't do that while you're performing, so just be aware of these little details. All right, so here we go. Yeah, that, that makes the bottom jump so much easier. Ah, missed it. So these moves are really what it's all about in the intro. Practice them, practice them. It won't come immediately, but just do these jumps until you feel, okay, I'm getting it a little better. Once you've done it for a minute or maximum two, move on. And so let's do that. So we go to this actual main theme. Now, mostly it's the octave G but there is that B flat for finger two, so I would try my best to find the position where I can reach all of these notes. Now, if you're kind of struggling and you've got a smaller hand, you might find that yeah, finger two just can't be right there, you know. But 
with a little bit of effort you can at least point it towards B flat and I find staying inside the keys kind of works right so you don't have to reach you, you definitely don't want to rest your second finger right here oh you know <laughs> okay so the, the rhythm it's syncopated right you don't hardly get any downbeat uh, references you, you, you start starting a downbeat and then you're off with these syncopated uh, values um, syncopated value placements perhaps I could say uh, but it does help if you do it slowly with the left hand right stopping and checking that both hands landed exactly together helps you to make sure that then when you speed up you're still land in the two hands or finger and other fingers fingers in one hand fingers in the other hand exactly together but this idea of always knowing when to stop during practice is extremely important it really organizes your brain to say okay this is what i'm trying to achieve i'm not just trying to play the whole passage and really struggling and really being stressed or what if i make a mistake you just say okay right here is the only thing i'm going to check right and so then if you make a mistake there then you can focus oh you know i didn't do it together so make sure you can do it just by itself okay maybe one note back let's do the famous backwards thing okay and stopping on yellow just do that a couple of times okay then with that yellow here let's start from let's say this B flat now and B flat you should actually be holding down the previous octave right because if you think about it it's being sustained maybe right until here so you, as you're starting from that blue line okay sorry I have to do this uh, and now the blue line okay so from this blue line you're in good position you're holding the first G down and then as you strike the C you really want to be coming up All right so that whole motion of I'm holding the, the these fingers in these ones right in the uh, right hand and then I'm letting go and then I'm restriking on the yellow you really want to master it until it's perfect seems like a simple thing but it's it's amazing how all of these simple things go right out of the window when you're in the heat of the moment trying to perform the entire passage so addressing the details like that really helps all right finally uh, what we get to uh, this and we're like okay okay so now I can do the whole transition from the downbeat all the way to that first syncopation with the yellow all right then then what happens then let's do an orange now we have to uh, synchronize the thumb of the left hand on that c and the octave gg in the right hand so same idea make sure you can land it together now if you start from here you might still be holding the, the, the octave g probably not probably uh, lifting the fingers by this point let's see I would probably hold like that so let's try that right from here all, right, all I want to really focus on is striking the two hands exactly together perfect now of course I'm ignoring the pianissimo uh, instruction so as quietly as we can you kind of want to fade in in this piece start really really soft with a gradual crescendo as it says rhythmically typically means yes exactly together but also re releasing those notes ahead of time really helps so I think if you use a lot of pedal for instance I mean it can work possibly but it might blur things a little bit so if you are going to use pedal I would recommend the so-called half pedal so if you look at the green right around there yeah so it's it gives a little bit of that resonance from the piano strings but it's nowhere as overwhelming as a full pedal and it sounds a little heavy okay pianissimo a little pedal yeah that's nice now 
let's move that blue line over here. So definitely holding both hands down and getting ready to release and re-strike. Pedal down a little bit. A little tricky, but I think I can do it. Um, let's try again. Adjust this just a tiny bit. Like that, all right, let's try. The wrist is a little hard on this right hand. So I'm playing inside the keys, but what you definitely don't want to do with the wrist is this. That kind of over humping it to allow you to play, I don't know, uh, without touching the white keys. I always say when you are playing any hand and you have to be in control over your fingers, you really want to press down these white keys, right? So you, you, you shouldn't be worried about, you know, a little closer. You shouldn't be worried about the left, or, sorry, what am I trying to say? The palm of any hand, in this case, the right hand, pressing down those white keys just a little bit because it allows you a much better control over how you press the keys with the tips of the fingers. So, you know, that's, that's a tendency people do. Weak fingers, being afraid of touching the palm to the white keys, it really doesn't help with playing the piano. So be, be comfortable lying your palm flat on those white key surfaces. Bringing them down a little bit is fine, just don't do, don't do that, right? Okay, so here I am as comfortable as I can be with this stretched out right hand position and then blue line. Ah, you know. You can notice by just deviating a little bit as it's called, you know, changing the angle of the wrist this way, I can find more and less comfortable positions for my fingers. Oh, by the way, <laughs> completely forgot to scoot over with my nose pointing right around here. I think that's easier than this. So just try it out with your own hands. Yeah. Okay, so we have three syncopations. Two, actually. So there it is. Trying to make sure that I strike it at exactly the right moment. Maybe a little pedal. So just starting on, on what, the first downbeat and really making sure I can do all of these strikes. No, I didn't do it. Something like that. Blue, yellow, orange. And then it continues. Luckily the second measure is a little easier because the, there is no syncopation. You just feel in one, two, and one, and Two and one, and then it's down, da, da. one, uh, two, uh, you know, you don't even know how to really count and sing it in the same time, but G, 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 B, G, 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 that's the rhythm. G, 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 B, G, 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 right? You can practice doing that. It's good to sort of exercise your rhythmic feeling but in the end of the, the day you will be making sure to synchronize the exact fingers with the exact other fingers to make it sound just like this whatever whatever the angle is i don't know this and so on and so on all right Again, luckily the left hand doesn't change at all until the end of the page. So let's take a quick look what's coming up. I oh, have to switch, hold on, there it is. So you can see at the end of this page we have 4212 as an idea. I personally would just hold f through throughout 5 over E flat. I, I think it's fine to change if you feel like you want to exercise finger four instead of five, but I feel that's too much of a stretch for me. So I myself would just stay with a five like this and not use the four. I don't know, that's easier for me. Right, and again, I'm articulating this five like this. I'm not doing that. Right, some people, because the five is so weak, they tr over rotate their entire forearm and just to bring those keys down. 
If you're in that category, just make sure to pull back and do that, right? So if you see from the side, that's what my fifth finger has to do. You can even over rotate the other way to really force that fifth finger to work hard. And of course, pianissimo, right? Now, playing fast and playing pianissimo is not easy, but the one thing that helps is to realize that to practice that touch, you have to only strike kind of halfway down the key. So if the key is right here, you can strike it all the way down, right? So from here to here, and maybe on this, you can kind of see it on, on, on this uh, camera, on the side camera. It, you can either go all the way down or you can go all the way to this point right, kind of halfway down. And if you learn to do that, you can actually get a very, very nice light touch, light pianissimo, while playing fast. Now, what you have to allow yourself to do is actually not play the notes. Like, check this out. Right, I'm, I'm mostly dropping the notes, but when I do play them, they're very, very light. And that's, I remember hearing that from the great Leon Fleischer in one of his master classes back in 99, I think it was. And it, it's true, it, it's just a really effective way to, to practice where instead of always playing all the way to the bottom of the key and always struggling to lighten up your touch, instead go from the other direction. Start soundless, start without any depth to your strike. It's the surface. Right? Keep that wrist down, don't do that. Right? Keep it down, keep it under control, and eventually just give it a little more force to each finger until ah, suddenly you get a little more and more and more, and now you have that gentle, uh, steady, uh, and very light left hand. The second line, the one we're looking at. Now here's a little bit tricky. Fingers can vary. My suggestion would be to do that kind of fingering. So look, I'll, I'll write again. Five, and here is four, and yeah, so of course Wait, I'm I'm fingering the <laughs> I'm fingering the singer's part. Uh, one more time. All right. So, and then one on that single note. We've been playing the B flat with finger two up to this point, the single B flat. But in this case, we'll just do the one and jump. So here you would be practicing this even like that perhaps, and uh, let's, let's see, one, one more little adjustment there. All right, so let's do backwards. So we're on F, I'll highlight it indigo. We want to be in this position, well I'm using five, if you prefer four that's fine, but with this position that's all we have to do. Maybe this. I'm not quite sure how deep inside the keys you have to play, but because of that B flat finger one on the black keys, I would just recommend getting comfortable playing inside the keys. It's just what you get with E flat major pieces. All right, so you just jump and stay inside the key on the, with the left hand, right con con right hand. Ah, why am I saying left hand? With the right hand, left hand can do whatever it wants. But maybe not so much because it has to play that <laughs> thumb on the B flat right here. So no, both hands have to be inside. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> A little uncomfortable, I know. And so then you just do that kind of adjustment. Even if you go to four, the thumb has to do this. You don't want to do that, right? Too much. Just be, be right next to it. Uh, you'll get used to it. Playing inside is not ideal, but you have to be able to do it. All right, now back to indigo highlight here. That's my position, not this, this inside the keys. Um, so, yeah, 
that's that's the adjustment I have to make. Okay, okay. So uh, let's let's also do this. In the left hand, you can see a little rectangle there. So we have to do all of them. All right. I am going to hold this note. So finger two on the thin blue line. Already in position to strike the indigo highlight. Oh, screwed up. So indigo highlight coming up. Okay, that's all I want to do. So what I'm making sure to do as I strike the indigo highlight is notice that my adjustment has taken place in the left hand. There it is. So I'm holding the B flat. I'm not holding nothing in the right hand. There it is. You can kind of see, right? The, the left hand has a very specific move to make. There it is. All right. Now we move the thin indigo starting our practice line to here. Oh, gosh. That's hard. Now, again, I'm forgetting to do what with my nose or, so to speak, my torso midline here. There, much easier. Still hard, though. Now, if you're finding it's too much to go all the way to the indigo highlight and play it, let's do a cyan right here. No. There. We can do the pedal as well, just to get used to it being down, if you want to use the half pedal. There it is. Yeah. So, all of these little pieces have to combine perfectly together in these sorts of transition moments where sudden hand position jumps occur and you have to kind of coordinate all these things. All right, now what? I have to do that, I guess. Uh, yeah, let's, let's keep going to... I'll put the blue indigo thing right here. Not the indigo cyan thing right here. And I'll do the blue line right here for now. So here, the connection between the fingers mimics the melodic line, right? Uh, magic that you. You don't want to go magic that you, right? You want to connect those into F. Between you and weave, I guess you, it's okay if you have that position shift that breaks up the legato line. That's why we have that three note slur in the right hand, four, five, one. And then we jump. If you use a bit of, a bit of pedal, it actually covers that transition quite nicely. But um, the important thing to realize is that you let go of the B flat in the thumb, and I'll show you what I mean. Pretty much right away, and same on that A flat. So that when you let's say start from here, from this thin blue line, you're really not holding that thumb down anymore in the right hand. You are actually ready to strike the thumb only B flat on the fourth beat. That way you'll have a very nice B, B, yeah? And then you jump. With a little bit of more pedal. So, in the context of this phrase, you'll have a, a nice smooth connection between the melodic notes. But yeah, make sure that the thumb keeps shifting in the right hand. Which is to say, in the case of the A-flat octave, it rises and it shifts over to B-flat. In the case of the B-flat octave, all it does is rises up, so you're ready to strike the B-flat. kind of jumping ahead of myself a little bit. Maybe start from here. So here we are holding the A flat for sure. Let me maybe mark that in as well. Yeah, you can see the difference between the two parts of the octave. And now let's start from here. Yeah, 
uh, it's already four notes I have to play and coordinate all these things. So maybe, maybe let's stop right here. Um, you can hardly see it, but a green or whatever the color is highlight. So starting from here, holding the A flat, holding the B flat in the left hand, and now too loud. So remember the soft, gentle, light touch. Let go of the top B flat, finger five, one more time. Holding that thin blue line notes. Too, lo too loud on the left hand. Maybe a little more pedal. That's better, right? So you can tell that when I practice this way, I do very little playing and I do a lot of thinking to analyze what exactly what else I should be doing that I'm not doing and then I fix it. The nice thing is that right away I learn it right. I don't then have to go back and figure it out again. Oh I was I'm playing too loud now I have to relearn everything and learn to play it softly or whatever. Right? So all of these little moments help to lay down the foundation for the rest of the piece. Now it doesn't really matter if you start at the beginning or the middle or the end. I like to start at the end myself to get that down first and foremost. But the important thing is you're understanding how the little pieces that make up the big piece fit together in these kind of micro segments. And then once your fingers know what to, to do and how to do it, much easier to put it all together. Anyway, leave me comments uh, if you have any questions about any of this, but pretty cool arrangement by whoever the arranger is. I, I wish these corporations would be honest and say, hey, you know, such and such person actually did it for us. I think people would appreciate it, but who am I to say I'm just a nobody musician? All right. <laughs>